Hey there, welcome to Neuropod. In this update episode, I'll cover the latest news from Neuralink from the past month. I'll show a clip of Elon's mom, May Musk, sharing her thoughts on these brain implants. We'll go behind the scenes to look at Neuralink's facilities, and then I'll provide an update on the third participant. Then I'll discuss how some employees have departed, plus a key advantage the team has. We'll look to the near future where Neuralink is working on helping the blind regain the ability to view the world again. Then the team unveiled their biggest achievement in helping restore physical freedom to paralyzed individuals. And we'll round out the episode with a blog post update from Neuralink's company website. First, we'll start off with this clip from Elon's supermodel mom, Mae Musk. Not only is she clearly proud and amazed at what Elon's accomplished, she also has a great point for all those who are not wanting to get one of these surgically implanted brain chips. I think he's the genius of the world, and people are loving him for that, and I'm very proud of him. And this Neuralink, people saying, I don't want a, something in my head. I said, well, you aren't paralyzed, mm. so, or you Good aren't point. blind. Good point. If you're blind and you don't want to see, then, then you can argue the point. You don't have to have a chip in your head. Let's look behind the scenes and see how this team is developing these implanted brain chips. This is a picture of the updated version of the surgical robot. The president of Neuralink, DJ Su, posted this on Valentine's Day and said, this is the next gen robot. You should see me move. And shortly after DJ posted this new robot picture, I showed my ex followers how this compares to a prior version surgical robot. Maybe this is a hint that Neuralink is building their products with love in mind. Then Ramina also posted these pictures and said, toured our array manufacturing line to see how our human grade arrays are made. This team is doing big things. Now, I'm not the brightest bulb, so I asked Grok to help me understand by explaining this to me like I'm a fifth grader. It shared that this is where the super tiny threads that get inserted into the brain tissue are made. The arrays are human grade, as they're safe and high quality enough for use in humans. And then Ramina added this, the lighting is being filtered to prevent unwanted exposure of photoresist. Photoresist is sensitive to specific wavelengths of light. To understand this using an analogy, the photoresist is essentially like a paint that's used to help manufacture the electrode threads. It's made up of chemicals like resins and sensitizers, which react to UV light. It's kind of like a drawing being ruined if it's left out in the sun for too long. The yellow light acts like sunglasses for the photoresist. Isn't it cool to see how these things are made? Let me share how these devices are helping people like Brad today. This is what Neuralink wrote on the company website. Given his late stage ALS, Brad is unable to speak or volitionally move any part of his body besides his eyes and the corners of his mouth. He has relied on an eye tracker to type letters as his only means of communicating. We're currently working with Brad to design a communication system from the ground up by combining language models and novel neurodecoding strategies. Our goal is to allow him to engage in conversations at a more natural speaking pace. I had the opportunity to go visit Brad and his family and we'll be sharing more. So make sure to subscribe or follow so you don't miss it. Remember back in the summer of 2014 when everyone was doing the ice bucket challenges? The cause people were raising awareness for was ALS. Let's go, ladies. <laughs> ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, is a terrible neurodegenerative disease that attacks nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. It causes muscle weakness and gradually worsens, eventually making it impossible to move, talk, or breathe on your own. And the worst part is there's no known cure. But as you can imagine, there are many organizations working on this, including one called Everything ALS. You can learn more about them at the link in the description. And moving back to the work from the Neuralink team, we should learn more about the team that makes this all possible. This brings us to some news that there are several key employees who have moved on to other projects. Now, I'm gonna share a few examples, and while I read the highlights of the notes they shared about their experiences at Neuralink, I want you to keep in mind how incredible of a team and mission Neuralink has. Jeremy, a former VP, said, I love the people at Neuralink deeply. They were and are among the most talented, hardworking, curious, and interesting people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. 
Sam, a former mechanical lead, shares, The people at Neuralink are the smartest and nicest I've ever met. Many take pay cuts to work there because they believe in the mission and want to help as many people as they can. Everyone is laser focused on future patients and how we can do the most right by those in need. And Bliss, a former BCI lead, said, I am not rage quitting or leaving due to a lack of faith in Neuralink's mission, leadership, or some other silliness. I'm a huge believer in the value of the work Neuralink is doing and the good we, you, can do in the world. These guys all made substantial contributions to the team and will inevitably continue doing excellent work on their next projects. And also, we should recognize that the employees that continue to work at Neuralink are Neuralink's number one advantage. The team still has excellent people, one of which was shared in this post from Romina, who says, This is Rob, one of our amazing field engineers who works tirelessly with P1, P2, and P3. As you probably know, she's referring to the first three human trial participants, and Rob gets direct feedback from these three participants to help Neuralink learn and improve the devices for future implantees. This feedback is the most critical in making these devices as useful as possible. Siobhan also added some important points, saying, you literally be working on giving those who have lost mobility the powers of telepathy and telekinesis to regain lost parts of their lives, plus making the Neuralink device even better in the future. Anyone who wants a job that fills their heart with meaning should consider this. And this last sentence is the point I want to drive home. Neuralink's shorter term mission to solve nearly all brain and spine problems is extremely admirable, and if you've never had the chance to work on a project or a team where everyone is emotionally invested in solving difficult problems like this, I simply can't encourage it enough. It will change your outlook on life to contribute to a cause with an equally passionate team. Now take a look at Neuralink's cool office lab environment. In typical Elon company style, there is open space, almost everything is white, lots of standing desks, and there aren't a lot of excessive amenities like a full-on cafeteria. They're there to get work done, not just lounge around at home. This is why the team can give updates like this about Neuralink's second product, Blindsight. Ramina from the clinical trials team said, we'll get to vision applicants very soon. This is an exciting time for Neuralink expanding the types of brain conditions they address. The first product helps paralyzed individuals regain some digital freedom. Now, Blindsight will help people see. This highlights their approach of building a generalized brain interface. The applicants she's referring to are people who have applied to Neuralink's patient registry on their company website. This registry helps Neuralink see who are good candidates for their human trials. So apply if you're in the United States, Canada, or UK at www.neuralink.com slash patient dash registry. And maybe you or someone you know will be the next to do what's being shown here. This is a video of P2, Alex, controlling an assistive robotic arm that's connected wirelessly via Bluetooth to his implanted Neuralink. Now, some won't realize how impactful this is, so I encourage you to think about how much able-bodied people take their limbs for granted. If you have no use of your arms or fingers, daily tasks turn into nuisances. For Alex, this gives him back some physical freedom. Oh, and you might be wondering why he wrote Convoy. It's because Neuralink's second human trial study that he's enrolled in is called the Convoy Study, which Neuralink discussed in this fairly lengthy blog post that details many of their study findings. Since it's my job to do all the research and present it concisely in this video, I'll just share the highlights. These three have had their links implanted for over 690 days and used telepathy for over 5,000 hours. They've also had a steady increase in usage as they continue to integrate this link implant into their daily lives. This is a brief clip of how this technology has impacted Noland, the first human with a Neuralink implant. I mean, when I first actually moved the cursor with my mind, it blew my mind for like a whole day. And to be helping, to be able to be useful in some way, it completely changed how I live. Now, in addition to just playing video games like he's doing here, Nolan shares that he's able to work and learn much more. This is just like what Alex has experienced. He even has a video of him designing this model on the computer and manufacturing it. 
He then even played a guitar via the robotic arm he's controlling with his mind. Now you're up to date on all the latest Neuralink news. If you want more Neuralink content, subscribe on YouTube and follow on X at Neuropod. In addition to you watching, following on X is the best way to support. And it's also where I post all the latest breaking news updates. So thank you to all of you watching, following, and subscribing. My name is Ryan Tanaka. Hope to catch you next time.